So now, CHIRP is the program we use. It uh, stands for Chinese something. I'll take it from anybody. I know it means something. Uh, it was developed by a group of people who saw the influx of the Chinese radios and felt there was a need for it. So apparently they try to keep it up with all the Chinese import radios, which have pro proliferated the ham radio market. Uh, probably putting some really good companies out of business, I will say. So when you can buy a radio for 25 bucks, why would you spend a hundred? There are a lot of good reasons for it, but everybody good gravitates to one of these. Um, okay, to do this, what's recommended is, uh, first of all, you get you get a cable like this. It comes, comes with it, a USB cable with that fat thing on it. That's, uh, there's a lot of electronics in there to convert it to what it needs to be. And it finds it, and I found on this rate, this computer, it comes up as COM port 10. And can, first of all, can you all see the CHIRP program that I have up? Anybody? Yes, yes okay. I see the white screen. So first thing, okay. And you can see the drop downs as I stroll across them? Yes. yes. So what we're going to do here is <clears throat> connect a radio. First of all, you plug that thing into your USB port and your radio is off at this point. It's, it's not turned on. And this plugs into the microphone input on these radios. A lot of them work the same way. A uh, similar plug is used by Kenwood, although these plugs do not work with a Kenwood. It has different electronics in it. Um, and as I might mention too, that's the Chinese radios use Chirp. Uh, things like the Yezu, um, Kenwood, ICOM, and all that, a lot of them have their own proprietary software that's used for it. And there's, there are other companies that make software for other brands as well. <clears throat> and there are some, some who people, people think some of these brands are better than the ones that came with the radio. I like to stick with the ones that came with the radio. Um, and they, they're available from the manufacturer. And it's like, uh, you know, I, I just do that. You can, you're up to whatever you want. So the first thing you want to do, you plug it in, then you turn it on, volume full. Come up and it, it shows what frequencies it's set to and all that. Now you're going to hit download from the radio. W3CWT. And pardon me while I silence my phone. Um, somehow. The, um, they make it complicated. There we go. Now, download from the radio. The reason you do this is that you want a starting point for your radio. I have seen some videos where they tell you, delete everything in the radio first. I choose not to. Now, you can see here when this came up, it found COM port 10. These things I had to put in, you know, the manufacturer, the vendor, and you'll see a lot of radios listed. Um, Anytone, Linko, uh, Midland, uh, a lot of them. And since this one's a Bofang, that's where you go first. There are times that won't work. In fact, when this three band radio came out, there was a lot of experimentation and we found that Radio Oddity was the one that worked for it. Since then, Bofang, up, these were all updated to fit this. Now, the other thing you're, you're looking for your model number, this is a UX3, the other one's a U5R. So, So we'll take that one and we're going to pull the information out of that radio. Now it's going to ask you these questions. It tells you turn your radio off, connect the microphone speaker cable, uh, which we just did, and then turn the radio on, volume up to 100%, ensure that the radio is tuned to a channel with no activity. Very important because it uses the audio amplifier in there too. 
do all this work. Then you click OK. Now, the cloning process should show up on your screen. The bar runs across. And when it's done, you'll see what is already in this radio. Now, uh, across the screen here, you'll see file, edit, view, radio, and help. Uh, those have dropped down. Um, Terry, your audio and video are freezing periodically, sometimes for 20 seconds or more. I think we lost him. I think you're right. Wind shifted and lost the cell service. <laughs> and we're back. I lost I lost connection. The wind shift. Yeah, it must have. I'm I'm not I'm not at home. I'm in a, a, a recording and DJ studio down in uh, where the heck am I? Down down toward York, and I lost the connection. So I I ran the hotspot off my phone. That's where we are now. So now back to the screen share. Where was I? <clears throat> now, what I what I I think where we we left off. I was going to save this program. I saved it as. And I labeled it, um, here we go, uh, the Bofang UV5R has today's date and my call sign WB3BKN1, and I saved it and I, uh, because I don't want to lose what I have done here to this radio, but then I'll show you what happens. When it's, there's a whole lot of stuff here, you'll notice in this radio, as I scroll down, there's a lot. So that's a lot of typing. This program offers you a way to do this without um, typing it all in. So if you go to where it says radio, and then you can import from a stock configuration. And in this stock configuration, they have uh, German free net frequencies, uh, U European Union channels, uh, marine channels, if that's French marine, I think, no weather alert stuff, 60 meter channels and all that. And MERS, so marine, MERS and so forth. Now, the other thing you can find on here is import from a data source. Now, you can pull in from say repeater book <clears throat> and you can do a political boundaries or proximity boundaries to where you are <clears throat> uh, political boundaries being you know counties and so forth proximity seems to work pretty good so i put in my zip code and i set a 50 mile distance and show me what's there and it's looking uh, so you hit OK, and there, there we go. These are what it found. I'm going to expand this a little bit. And because it was looking for the closest things to my home, it here shows one in Catawissa, a six meter repeater, uh, and one in Lingelstown Blue Mountain. That's another six meter repeater. W3ND, that's the uh, CPRA uh, call sign. AA3RG is uh, uh, Pine Grove, and so forth. <clears throat> now these these are 
repeaters that it found locally. And you can see that the Mount Holly Springs and Harrisburg and, and so forth are all listed. If you get down through, you say, okay, this is pretty good. These are the ones that I like. Um, 64, 655 Sunbury and so forth. You will not find any simplex channels on here. You will only find repeaters when you do it this way. So you go through them and you can highlight the ones you want and you can uncheck the ones you don't want. So we're going to, <clears throat> well, the six meter ones are unchecked already. Uh, the Ellendale Ford stuff and Pine Grove, they're, they're all there. So now you can hit okay. And now they're in the database ready to put into your radio. As you can look, um, it added them somewhere. So we're gonna go find them. Although it doesn't look like they did. Let's try it again. I missed something along the way. We went to repeater book proximity to 17032 and we put them in. Now, we check them, import file. And what I did should have done it. But to make sure, let's go back to this screen and I oh, won't let me with that open. I guess we can control A and delete everything. And now they're empty. So now that that's an empty slate, nothing's in it. We can go back to that file and do that all over again. Repeater book, proximity query. And here's where you put in your zip code where you're located or what you want it to do. And the bands you can select two meters, 10 meters, six meters and so forth. But if you say all, you can correct for that later and bring them in just like that, there they are. Now, if you hit okay, it's supposed to put them in and sure enough it did. Now that saved you a whole lot of time in uh, doing that. The only thing you need to look at is make sure your tones are correct. Uh, and here you can see that the 131.8 is correct on the 145.11 repeater sitting there on channel four. And so you can go down through them and check them uh, I know that that's the correct tone. So that's, uh, that's how I know. And I also know the history behind how they came about for most of these things. <clears throat> but if you scroll down through it, all this stuff is available locally. Now, if you see this and say, okay, well, we're missing a lot here. The first three channels are empty. You can take a block of them by holding down shift and highlighting them and you can move them up um, by right clicking on the, on the highlighted area and hit move up. And just like the Jeffersons, it moves on up and do it a couple times till you get it up where you want it. Now, okay, now 145.11 is the number one, uh, number one channel. And 145.17, which is over in Pine Grove is, is number two and so forth. So you can uh, take a couple of these and, and move them around to wherever you want them to be. You have a way that you like to organize your uh, frequencies. That's, that's what you'll do here. Uh, I'm gonna try something here. No, it doesn't work. I was gonna see if we could drag them, but you can't. So we're gonna move these guys up a little bit and then I'll write it to the radio. And now we're all in. Now, I'm gonna write this back to the radio. Oh, looky, down here on number 15 is a W3UU repeater, our uh, club repeater for Harrisburg Radio Amateur Club. Now I'm gonna take this file and upload it to the radio and it's on COM10. So we're all set and yes, it, now it's, as you see that, You'll find the light blinking 
on the screen as it uploads. Uh, you can't really see the screen all that well. well. When it's done, it'll tell us it's done on this on the screen below. And there it is. Now I'm going to pull this. Now, if you have your uh, radios tuned to 145.11, we'll see how well I make it from Lewisbury. Very noisy <laughs> inside this building, but I can WB3 BKN. Did I come through? <laughs> Nobody's hearing me. <clears throat> so. Okay, so there you have it. <clears throat> now, what else can we do with this program? Okay, there, there are still a couple of things. I'll reconnect the radio. The settings, click here. See, you were up here in memories. Now we'll go down here to settings. This gives us some uh, real basic settings to start with. Uh, your squelch level is also available on the front of the radio. You can go to a menu there and a battery saver and so forth and a timeout time and seconds for the backlighting. You can have a beep on it. I wouldn't because I don't like to hear it beeping every time I touch a button. Um, the timeout timer, you set that for how long you think you're going to be winded and talking. Um, you can display the, the, in the frequency, the channel name, the, the channel number, the name and the frequency are their your options. Some of the repeaters, you might want to call them in your programming. You might want to say Harrisburg or Mount Holly Springs and so forth. That's where that would come into play. Uh, in the mode B, that's your second uh, level on the screen. That's your, you decide what you want that in. Then you can choose the colors of your standby LED colors and your when it's receiving and, and transmitting. You see it's orange when you're transmitting, it's blue when you're receiving, and purple when it's on standby. Next one is advanced settings. If you're using voice operated transmit, the Vox, that's available uh, on these. I don't recommend it unless you're in a quiet place all the time. Vox, to me, I, I don't use it ever on HF or even on here. But if you're going to use this radio as a uh, something for digital modes, <clears throat> that Vox is a good thing to have because you can plug your computer into this same port that we're using to program with a different cord, obviously, and run that into your uh, computer. And with your digital modes, it's all audio anyway. So that's when it hears the audio, it'll turn your transmitter. That's what the Vox is used for, in my opinion, most of the time. <clears throat> now the dual watch priority, I turn that off because um, if you have it set to, to watch two channels and one starts talking, you don't know where it is. So I have it so that the arrow pointing on the screen, there's an arrow if you look at these things and it points to what frequency it's on. And right now it's on the top one. So that's, I, I have tried it on dual watch and it's too confusing for me. Um, <clears throat> but you can also, the, it, the voice that it comes back to and you can choose a couple different languages, English and Chinese, so, or you can turn it off so it doesn't talk to you. And if you go down through here, these are just different things uh, that's available of uh, you can lock your radio and, and so forth. Broadcast FM radio is kind of fun. If you, you know, you're out working in the field on your tractor, like, like everybody does, I can hear it <laughs> on the radio. Uh, squelch tail eliminator. I don't like that feature. In fact, I'm going to turn that off. Um, when you let up on it, it's, it's quiet. It, it mutes it until it, uh, it hears something. So anyway, there's your all those other settings. This is kind of cool. You can uh, have a power on message. Uh, my power on message happens to be my call sign. Uh, you can have other messages on it as well. 
and you set your limits for your frequencies, which are kind of preset on the radio. And you'll notice that this goes from 136 to 260 because this one, this radio happens to be a 220 radio as well. And then your UHF channels down the bottom, your upper limits of that, which this one is made to go into the GMRS frequencies as well. <clears throat> Work mode settings, these are just things you probably will never have to touch. Uh, I did, however, change my VFO A channel and my, I didn't touch the B channel, but I, I wanted that to come up on the 220 repeater because honestly, this is, that's what I use this radio for mostly is 220. And the uh, radio preset <clears throat> happens to be 88.5. It's a, it's a channel I like, <laughs> and it happens to be in Halifax. Uh, DTMF settings. Um, these are different settings for different things. And you can look through the book to find out what they all do. And the service settings, uh, different squelch modes and so forth, which you'll never have to touch, to be honest. So that's what's under that. So that's your settings menu uh, of that. Uh, it's You set the, the parameters under the basic and advanced to what you like it to be and then it's all done. So you can go back again and then you hit the, the down, uh, upload to radio. You can do that again and then your parameters will be all in there that you changed on the second channel as well, or on, this, on the second menu. Um, on, on this, uh, while it's uploading that, you can change your memory channels. I have it starting at zero most people start them at one. Uh, you can hit this to refresh your channels, uh, special channels. Um, I, I'm not exactly sure what that means. And I have it set to show the empty ones. You can do this, click it, and it'll not show the empty channels. I like to know what's where. And then the properties of things are, I don't know how, what that does. It doesn't seem to do anything. So I go back to the memories and that's how it all works. Um, and again, if you, one of the requirements we have at MCOM is you have to be able to program them in the field without a computer. And <clears throat> since I don't use these a whole lot, I never really figured it out. I, I bought them because they were cheap and don't use them so much. I, I do keep the 220 one in the car. Uh, when I'm close enough to the repeater, I can hit it and I have a 220 antenna on it. That's why it's there. So any comments? A lot. Some of you already use these things. Uh, is there anything that should be mentioned that I have not mentioned? I have a question. But go ahead. Have you ever tried programming one of the 2720s with Chirp? Who makes a 27? Oh, oh the, uh, the ones we have at MCOM. Yes. I'm told it does not work. Yeah, that's, I discovered that myself. I was just wondering whether you had more success with it than I did. No, Chirp doesn't work with a lot of stuff. It doesn't do any of my Kenwoods. I mean, it, it's in the, the 2720 is in the menu. You can select it, but when you actually go to program it, it goes to Never Never Land. That's, yeah. Yeah, because it, it's, they, they did mostly the, uh, the cheap stuff. The, the cheap Chinese stuff with this one. Um, okay, I forgot. If, what if I you go to radio, it's it's in the drop down list. You can select the ICOM twenty seven twenty, but it just doesn't actually function. Yeah, the guys up in um, Upper County have tried it, and they told me it didn't work. So, and I said, okay, now I know, because <laughs> they they're around there is pretty often. And um, they uh, they get to play with it a lot more. Now this is terrible. I just brought up my file that I saved, and let's see. Open. I opened up this one that I saved earlier, and hit open. It's supposed to bring it into this uh, program. Is it the other tab up there? 
up where it says Balfang UV 5, 5R to the right of it, there's another tab. Where? Right there. Oh, there it is. Okay. See, now I, I learned something here today. That opens up another, how do I get rid of that first one? That just keeps going back and forth. There we go. Okay, now they're gone. All right, so now what I am gonna do while I have this here is settings and uh, go into the advanced and get rid of that squelch tail eliminator. It's annoying to me. <clears throat> and then we're all set. So Terry, one thing I would also add um, is that this is a good way to quickly modify your power levels so that if there's a repeater that you need high power for versus uh, low power. You can preset that and then you don't have to manually change it every time you turn your radio on. Good point. I like to cook my brain, so I have mine all set to high power. But that's, um, as soon as this cloning thing leaves here, I'll slide it over here. Um, the very last on uh, next to the last back here is where you set them for your power levels and as you go in to edit now I'll, I'll do that now I'll, I'll just that's one thing that i didn't do i showed you how to get it up from a from the source now we'll go into this one and I, we'll put it in uh, one thing that i did not do to any of these radios and i i will be doing it and i I have a list of, of all the frequencies that are used for simplex frequencies. And that's something else uh, I'll touch on. Simplex, we throw that, num that name around a lot. And repeaters are duplex. It means you're transmitting on one frequency and receiving on a different one. And when you have a frequency listed on your radio, <clears throat> it is the receive, you're receiving what the repeater is transmitting. When you transmit, you're on some on simplex, you're transmitting and receiving all on the same frequency. And there is a, uh, a band plan for all of that. And they uh, will use, uh, the, there's a national call channel on two meters and there's a national call channel on 440. Uh, the two meters is 146.52. So I'm gonna put that in here. Uh, in channel 32. Now tone, we don't, okay, come back. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, where did I put it? 32, okay. Now you can right click on here. Uh, let's insert row. You can copy rows and move them too. But as you go across here, so you don't need a tone, but if you would, you would hit the drop down arrow and the tones come up and you can select the tone. Uh, you can pan across. Um, this is duplex, no, it's set to none. And you're on the FM mode. You can be on narrowband FM or FM. We have no narrowband anything around here on ham radio. <clears throat> Uh, so always make it to FM. And you'll often hear people who have one of these radios and they, they think, oh, well, that's cool. I'll use narrow band. It's really hard to hear them because it, what that means is in FM, it's frequency modulation. It moves the, the radio frequency back and forth at an audio rate. It doesn't stay right on that channel, but it, it moves at an audio rate. Uh, there's a new form of FM narrow band that because in commercial radio, they can squeeze more channels into a given spectrum by narrowing that. But then on the receiver end, you need the receiver to be set for narrow band as well, or you won't hear each other that, that well. So that's what that is. But like I say, in ham radio, we're still on wideband as they would call it now. And then here you click on the channel, you can go high and low. Power and that too. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but on that note, I just want to point out that I earlier this uh, this fall, I, I worked a race up in um, um, 
what part is that? Um, I can't think of it. Oh, I'm in the Wilkes-Barre area. Wilkes-Barre okay. area. But um, they actually had a repeater set to narrow band. So well, they did. although it's not that common, it's good to know how to, to set that so that um, if they do have, if you run into that, um, you can get right. on that repeater. <clears throat> okay, good point. Uh, often uh, your simplex channels, if you're using them to do a race and that sort of thing, you might want them on high power because uh, you have a, the, the rubber antenna on these things, uh, as Scotty would say, that's eh, a piece of crap because it is. <laughs> it's, it's a, a, if you think about it, a quarter wave on two meters is about 19 inches and you're that much short. So they, they're an attenuator, they, they don't radiate well, but they sure are convenient. You can put them in your pocket and that spring keeps coming back. So, well, usually. <clears throat> yeah, there's, there's your, your narrow band FM and your high and low power as well. All of that's available on the front end of the radio uh, in the manual mode. <clears throat> I can channel 24 there. Say that again. What is channel 24? 24. I don't know. That that must have been in the radio when I got it. They keep well, they're they're European radios. They're they're made for everywhere, but that must have been one that they they had, and we're gonna delete that. <clears throat> then we'll move. I should have uh, hit and shift block up. Let's try that, see what happens. Okay, now it did it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. There, I know that there were a lot of strange ones in here when I got it, but- The wrong yell on the one one repeater too. Yep, you're right. Uh, we're, So much for a database, huh? One thirty one point eight. There we go. <clears throat> and now there's another, I don't know if you all know it, but there's a four forty repeater. Um on Mount Holly Mountain now. And everybody should really give it a try. It's it's right here in my channel 25, 449.925. The tone is 123. This shows it as a K3, KA3 RMP. It is not, it's now um, KA3 TKW. That's one of Tom's, let's put that in. <clears throat> so that's, um, oh, I did it on the wrong one. So. It's, um, where did it go? Anyway, we'll let it go. But at four forty nine nine two five, you should give it a try. Channel twenty five. So that's um, it used to be down in Hershey, and the the repeater equipment showed up. Um, I had been looking for it for quite a while, and then Richard found it, or somebody found it. I don't know, but he ended up with it, and then. The repeater was no good, so it's we still have it. But the frequency pair is now. Tom called and said, "Can we have it? I have a repeater to put up." Because we all knew the guy, and he said, uh, I'd, "I'd like to keep his 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 uh, idea alive." So that's what we're doing. We're keeping that up. Anything else on this uh, that we're going over? Any comments on it? I'm going to save this.
Now I'm going to put it into the radio with all the corrections. And there it goes. <clears throat> One of the things, uh, the, a couple things, you know, the, like the, the uh, duplex and simplex, I hope that's clear to everybody that didn't know what it was uh, because we throw a lot of terms around in ham radio as experienced people and think everybody knows them. And that's not necessarily the case. And when you have new people that, you know, just, just help them learn. Uh, one of the things too, that there was a, I don't know why, but they had to give a name to every channel. Uh, and let me bring that up. There's a, uh, a form that we used to have, and uh, let's see if I can find it quick. I, I have it, it's, this is a 2013 version of it. A lot of these repeaters are gone and changed frequencies, some became DMR and so forth. Um, Maybe I put it under Aries. Wouldn't that be great? Okay, ICS 217. And we're going to open that. These are the, uh, if, you, if you go through this, this form, you'll see the, uh, they, they call it Pima 1, 147075. These were arbitrary names given to important repeaters. <clears throat> and some people believe that everybody knew this. They're going to simplex 14. Hey, Terry. No. Yeah. Sorry, are you showing Chirp or are you showing a different document? Oh, I thought I could bring that up. Wait a minute. You're right. Let me, uh, my bad, as they say. Let me change that. Okay, stop share. And now we're gonna open up a new share. Um, there it is. Now, can you see it? <clears throat> okay, this, can you, can you all see this form now? Yes. It says communications yeah. resource availability worksheet. This form has floated around for quite a while. Um, <clears throat> here under channel name, PIMA 1-1P, PIMA 1P, that's, at, it tells you what it's configured as, uh, the frequency, uh, transmit and receive, and it says South Central Task Force primary share with PIMA. Uh, the South Central Task Force is, I, I assume they're still in existence. It's a way of organizing all of the Aries, races groups together under one umbrella. Um, and you see at the bottom, simplex 14, as they call it, is 147.42. And you see it's transmits received on the same frequency. They listed it as its American Red Cross National Simplex Coordination Frequency. This, this form, I need to go through and figure out what's still there. Uh, like now this has also the, um, the channels that are on HF um, that, that we get on and like here, I'll put the arrow right over this and they call this lower sideband voice PMS C1 3993.5. That's the one where we have a net every Sunday morning at 7.30, or no, 8.30, I'm sorry, 8.30 in the morning. Central area voice net, that's a primary one, there's a secondary. And you'll find these are, uh, some of them are out of the handband, uh, but that's that's what they're all about. Now with this, I, I've got to move this, uh, there we go. Uh, 
like I said, this a lot of this stuff has changed, and with a little bit of help, we'll get this uh, straightened out and have it available for anybody that wants it. Uh, there are good frequencies on here to know of, and the RACIs, interoperational frequencies are here uh, for the different HF stuff, <clears throat> uh, the regional coordinations of uh, channels for everything are on here. Uh, Simplex has its own tab, and that's where you'll find most of the Simplex frequencies that we use. Uh, I, I, like I, I said to, uh, to Zach, you guys were doing the... Um, simplex on a, a channel that wasn't part of the uh, AWRL uh, listing, which is okay, uh, but these are what the AWRL uh, considers the, the simplex frequencies. And you'll, it's so small, somewhere I should be able to zoom in on that, but um, 146.5, Four, but uh, five, 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 two, five, eight, uh, and so forth. Um, you'll, you'll see them down through the list. Your GMRS frequencies, uh, family radio service and GMRS are in here. Civil Air Patrol is in here. And then they're broken down further by counties. And they, there are certain simplex frequencies that they had assigned to certain counties as uh, their primary simplex frequencies. Now let's look at Dauphin County. Um, they list seven six as Dauphin three, and and don't write them in as your don't don't consider them what they're called because those names change all the time. Uh, if one repeater goes down, another one's bumped up to replace it, and so forth. And like I said, I don't think they really use them anymore, but here's our uh, 224.18. And it has me listed as WA3BKN. I, I, I'm not, but uh, that's what those are. So Franklin County's in here, Lancaster County and, and Lebanon and so forth. And each one has a, their own designations that they gave them, but it's a good list and uh, we'll go through it and make any corrections, then I'll make it available to everybody. It's in, uh, a, a, uh, so it's a, a spreadsheet format. You can open it up in Open Office or uh, Microsoft uh, Excel, it'll work in. I think that's about what I've got to present here tonight. I think uh, that pretty much covers all of it. Uh, so any comments or anything before we end it?